Next up in our Big 12 preview is the TCU Horn Frogs, who, let's face it, Dylan, had kind of a hangover from their year before, making it all the way to the national championship game, and they went 5-7 and seven this past year and did not make a bowl game. This is actually the first time that a team has made it to the national title game and then missed a bowl game the following season since Texas in 2010. Now, it's unlikely that TCU is going to make another run to the national title game, but there is optimism, though, that they can get back to having a, uh, a winning season. And a big reason for that, Dawn, is their receiving core. They kind of really improved this offseason. Yeah, I mean, you look at what how they built that national title team, and they were loaded at receiver, and they're pretty loaded at receiver now. You still have Savion Williams. You still have J.P. Richardson, incumbent. And then you've got Eric McAllister, who's a really, really good player, coming in from Boise State, who's going to fit right in. And you, get, you steal Drake Dabney at tight end from Baylor. This is a group that can give their quarterback, Josh Hoover, some hope and some more to work with. It's, it's how Sonny Dykes built – well, how he – really manage that national title team. Some of it he inherited, right? But they were stacked at receiver on that team, and it's the same reason they have hope for this team to do a little better than they did last year. Yeah, I think on the other side of the ball is probably their biggest weakness, uh, the pass rush. They really struggled to get after the quarterback last year. They were among the 10 worst teams in the country in both pass rush win rate and pressure rate last year. It didn't really do much to address that issue in the transfer portal. And last year's pressure leader, Dominic Williams, is gone. He went to Oklahoma, as was he. Lose your pressure leader from last year and didn't really do much to fix it in the transfer portal. So I think the pass rush for TCU is still the biggest weakness of this team right now. But, Dalton, tell me more about Josh Hoover uh, and what to expect from him, uh, who kind of was inserted as, a, uh, as the backup from Chandler Morris, but kind of played a little bit more last year than some were expecting. Yeah, Morris got hurt against Iowa State and just kind of never came back. So Hoover was really thrown into the fire, especially, like you said, off a team coming off such a huge year and then kind of a letdown year after they lost so much talent. So it was a really tough job. But, you know, there was some real highs and lows, man. He had actually the two highest single-game passing grades in the Big 12 last year in Week 7 and 12, a 92.1 and a 91.4. So we've seen the high, and then there's some low, too, where, you know, the thing with Hoover is there's nothing really that – really stands out about him physically, right? Like he's pretty good in the quick game and he makes quick decisions. He throws some nice balls down the seam, but you wouldn't call him like a dynamic player. And I think the bigger thing is for him with a full year starting and going into this year, I think as the incumbent starter is a big advantage for him because one thing he struggled with was handling the blitz and seeing a lot of looks from opposing front sevens. So with more weapons and just more experience, I think he can be better he won't be the best quarterback in this conference, um, but the highs were there enough where you go, okay, this guy could start for us. He just has to reel in some of the mistakes against the blitz and under pressure, and he's got a good group to work with to do that. He absolutely does, and the leader of that group is Eric McAllister, their transfer receiver we talked about just a second before, uh, for coming in from Boise State. So he actually sat out the final five games of the season because he decided to enter the transfer portal. But before he sat out, though, he was having a really good year as Boise State's top receiver. 3.03 yards per route run. That was fifth among group of five receivers. 31.3% target rate was eighth. So Boise State was targeting him often when he was out there. Uh, really smooth footwork, large catch radius at six foot three. Even though, Dolan, he sat out five games, he had 14 contested catches last year, which tied for ninth among all receivers in the country. So you could have even imagined if he played those final five games, what it would have looked like if he was out there. Um, he enters TCU as their projected top receiver next year, and I'm really excited to see what he could do going from the Mountain West over the Big 12 now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, they're going to win a lot of these games offensively. You mentioned on defense, the lack of a pass rush. Well, one thing they don't lack is that linebacker, right? And one guy to watch for is Nandi Obiazor, all right? One of the most well-rounded linebackers in the Big 12. The only linebacker last year in the Big 12 to have 65-plus grades in run D, pass rush, and coverage. And he's a really athletic dude, right? You're talking about 6'3", 225 pounds, really good speed, over 20 miles an hour on a player tracking. Just does a little bit of everything for them, right? And even if they don't get a ton of pass rush, if he can help them in the middle, kind of all the way around and even in coverage and just kind of directing traffic in the middle, then they might have some hope for this defense that they can keep them in games. But Obiazor is the centerpiece of this defense. He's going to continue to be that. Yeah, former Juco product as well. Really cool to see how his career has developed and collegiately as well. All right, Dawn, uh, what will it be for, for TCU this year? Will it be a bounce back from their 5-7 and seven year? 
uh, or were we expecting kind of more of the same from what was a hangover season in 2023? I, I could see a, a mini bounce back, not a national title bounce back. Uh, I, I don't think that's coming. I don't think they're one of like the best teams in the Big 12. But they do have an offense and, and a lot of weapons that could cause teams problems. They could find themselves in shootouts. And they're a bit unique because they're not one of the teams that has some dynamite run game like a ton of other teams in the Big 12, right? But they usually do find a way. Even last year, they found a way to run the ball with guys like Imani Bailey, right? They usually find ways to balance it out and run the ball. But... Their defense would be the thing that caps the ceiling for me. I, you know, other you have Obi Azor, but their D line's a bit rough. They've lost a lot on defense the last couple of years. They lost Josh Newton now in the in this past draft. You're talking about a team that looks a little bit one sided, but I think a bowl game is realistic for them if Josh Hoover calms down a little bit in the pocket, especially against the blitz and things like that. Yeah, I think bowl game is what I'm expecting out of them. Like around six or seven wins, uh, they play. They actually play SMU as one of their non-cons. That's a tough non-conference game to play, right, at SMU as well. So they do have Stanford to open the season, which is a pretty gimme. All right, Stanford might be the worst team in the Power 5 right now, uh, Power 4, I should say. So, yeah, I think, yeah, six or seven wins. I mean, they play UCF. They play Kansas. They play Utah. Uh, they play Arizona, like uh, Oklahoma State. Uh, they have a tough schedule, but – um, I think there's a world where they can win six or seven games. I'm with you. They're not going to get back to winning eight, nine games like they were consistently uh, in the past but uh, or even be a national title contender like they were a couple of years ago. But I think six and six, seven and five, maybe make it a bowl game is what to expect out of the TCU Horn Frogs this year. That's what we got for our preview of TCU. Hey, thanks for watching the PFF College Football Show. Before I let you go, though, we have an unbelievable deal for you guys right now. If you use the code CFB25, you get 25% off your PFF Plus annual subscription. We've got the 2024 College Football Preview Guide that you can find over at PFF.com featuring the best players in the country from all 70 Power 5 teams plus 10 Group of 5 teams that have the best chance at making the College Football Playoff as well. You can also gain access to NCAA premium stats for historical games, uh, teams, and player tracking dating all the way back to 2014, so the last decade or so of college football. All the stats you can hope for, you can find in PFF Premium as well. Also, you can be the GM of your favorite NFL team with our unbelievable mock draft simulator where you can draft up to seven rounds of players for your NFL team. And if you want to dominate your fantasy league, you could do that as well using the best fantasy tools on the planet. All of that and more with your PFF Plus annual subscription, which you can find for 25% off right now with the code you can find in the description. Or if you want to go to subscribe.pff.com and use the code CFB25 at checkout. Again, you get 25% off your PFF Plus subscription. This won't last forever, so make sure you take advantage of it right now.